Hello dear developers and programmers, you are watching episode 3 of the tutorial on sending form data from website to Telegram. In this episode, we are going to select one of the forms and write the complete JavaScript code for its connection with Telegram API. If you remember, in episode 1 I showed you three forms. Complex version. Image upload support version. Simple version. I have chosen the second version to connect this form to Telegram API for you so that it can transfer our data to personal chat through a bot. I chose this form because it uploads and transfers both text data and images, so I thought it would be a suitable option for practice and better understanding for teaching and learning. Alright, currently this form only has some features like drag and drop of images and displaying messages and errors, and such things, and when we click on the form submit button, nothing happens. Next, we are going to define what should happen, which is to establish a connection with the Telegram server. This is the HTML structure of the form that I have defined that we are going to work on. As you can see, I have added a JavaScript file named app.js to the HTML code of this page. In this script, we have some items. Let's take a look at the items I have defined. In this part of the code, I have defined all the elements I need as variables and selected them from the HTML DOM. This part of the code is related to the drag and drop feature of the form, which we won't be working with in this tutorial, I just mentioned it for information. This part of the code is also related to the size limit of the image to be uploaded and also the image preview. And at the end, we have a function for displaying the result and the success or failure status and error at the end of our form. From now on, we are going to define what happens when the form submit button is clicked. Let's start defining the process of sending form data to Telegram. Using an event listener, I define an event that specifies what happens when the user clicks on the form submit button. Well, first of all, I prevent the default behavior of the form button submission. Now that the button is submitted, I prevent it from being submitted again. Then I display a temporary text with the title sending inside the form button. Now, by defining a try-catch block along with finally, I define different processing states on the form. As the final event, if the form operation is successful, I activate the submit button again so that it can be clicked again. Also, I return the text inside the button to its original state. For error handling, I also create a console error, then I create a display error at the end of the form so that the user is aware of the processing status. Now it's time to work on the form data. In this step, I first select the full form data. This variable, form, is the same form that I selected at the beginning of the code. Now it's time to define the bot token and chat ID. As I taught you in episode 2 how to generate them, in this step you must place their values in the relevant variables. In this step, by defining a variable called text, I specify the format of the message content that I want to send to my Telegram chat.
you can define the format of messages however you want. Okay, now it's time to connect to the Telegram server. I am defining a variable containing the official Telegram API link. According to the standard, in this part of the link, I must place our bot token variable. And at the end of the link, the expression send message which is for sending text messages. Now, in this way, we define both our request and the response we receive from the Telegram server in a variable just as beautifully. Using the fetch command, we send our data to the Telegram server. The method must be post, and in the header, we also specify that the data should be JSON. In the body of our sending request, we also specify that the data should be sent to this chat ID. In the text, which is the same sending format that I defined above. So in total, we specify that the data should be retrieved and sent from the form with the JSON standard in format. In this line of code, by writing a condition, I specify that if there is an error in the response received from the Telegram API, this custom text should be displayed. Alright, now it's time to send the image. First, I receive the image selected by the user from within the form. Then, by defining a condition, I check to make sure that the image is really an image and also in terms of allowed format and its size should not be more than 5 megabytes that I previously defined in the code of this page. Sending an image to the Telegram API is similar to text, but at the end of the link, the expression send photo should be placed. Using form data, I extract the image data as base64 from within the form and save it in the photo form data object. Now I add a few more data to our object. The chat ID, which is the destination of our message. The photo key should actually contain the base64 data of our image. The caption key is also the caption within the telegram message that we send. Now we make a fetch request with the post method along with the object containing the contents of our image to the Telegram API server. Okay, now is the final step. I apply a few visual events. A success message to be displayed to the user. Resetting the form, meaning the entered data completely disappears. And hiding the image that the user has selected and sees its preview within the form. And that's all, up to here we have completely defined the process of sending text and sending images with the Telegram API. Now it's time to test, let's test if everything is working properly or not. Okay. I refresh the page with Ctrl plus F5 to clear the previous script cache. Now I write some dummy data to test the form. And send. Yes, congratulations. The message was successfully sent, directly from our site's form to the Telegram chat.
Now let's also test the image upload. Excellent, as you can see, the image is also successfully sent exactly as we wrote its code. I must say that you can also send the image as a file as an attachment, but I don't intend to make this tutorial longer than this. And this was the third test of sending the image. As a final point of this episode, I say that this form of ours now is application as a demo and for learning, and should never be used as a production version. Let's take a look at the system structure we have designed to see how it works. Yes, we are directly connecting to the Telegram server, and our problem is that since we are on the client side and our bot token and chat ID are exposed, it can easily be misused. Of course, now that the whole program is on local in our system, but such a program should not be placed on our server and used as production. I hope you enjoyed watching episode 3. Alright, I'll end the video here. In the next episode, I will teach you how to securely implement and run this program on your site. We will use a Cloudflare worker for free as a server. If you found this tutorial useful, please support me with a like, subscribe, comment, and share. Hit the bell icon to get notified as soon as new episodes drop. Thanks for watching, I hope it was helpful.